to you by Crest. Crest, the toothpaste that's been clinically tested against cavities. The toothpaste for families that want fewer cavities. And now, let's all play What's My Line? From New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. On my left, the wonderful actor, panelist, comedian, Orson Bean. The lovely wife of my dear buddy, Martin Gable. She opens a week from Monday in Palm uh, Beach, Miss Arlene Francis. And now, a rested gentleman who has come back from a lovely vacation in Lyford Key in Nassau. We're glad to have him back, and we know he's going to guess everything tonight from his rest. Mr. Bennett, sir. Last Sunday night down at Lyford Key in Nassau, I actually saw What's My Line, although the picture faded every few minutes and got snowy. But even in that messy reception, uh, the panel moderator looked splendiferous and gorgeous as he does in real life. <laughs> and here he is, John Charles Daly. <laughs> After that introduction, I'm going to use what little influence I have to get Bennett another vacation, an even longer one. And to tell the truth, Mr. Bean, how's that, Bennett? Now, you've been away for a couple of weeks. It's nice to have you with us. Thank you, Mr. Daly. You've worked that in well, I thought. <laughs> very nice to have you with us and tell the truth. I hope we give you a, a very interesting half hour. I think we will, because we've got some interesting occupations for all four of you. We will also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program, and we'll meet our first challenger after this message. And to make all of you who are down in sunny climes happy, uh, I would pay tribute, first of all, to our audience in the theater tonight. We've had a whirling snowstorm all day. There's six inches of snow outside. They say it's going to stop by midnight, but we have no guarantees. And now to meet one of our other hardy souls tonight, our first challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Mary Hazel Ash. Right, ma'am? <laughs> it is Miss Ash. Yes, it is. And I think uh, we might ask where you're from. I'm from Goodyear, Arizona. Goodyear, Arizona. And panel, we will admit that Miss Ash is a student at Aristo Arizona State University. We're interested in uh, the avocation that she practices on weekends during holidays, by which she earns a, a reasonable stipend. And may I present our panel, Miss Ash? How do you do? Now, will you join me over here, please? And we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, we can tell you that Miss Ash is salaried and deals in a service, and I think we ought to put the vacationer to work. We'll start things with Bennett Surf. Miss Ash, is the, there's a service you perform done for a profit-making corporation? Yes, it is. Uh, does it have anything whatever to do with animal life? Yes. That rested him a lot of good. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it did. Uh, would they be four-legged animals? Yes. Are they domestic animals? Yes. K 
can uh, anybody ever climb onto one of these animals? Oh, definitely. Are they horses? Yes. I know when to quit when I'm going good. I pass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, well, you do something to horses that benefits them? No. 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 no, the relationship here has not been as yet ascertained. It's just agreed that there are some four-footed animals which have been described as horses in the general mix. So that would make it one down and nine in to go, Mr. B. What? In the general mix. 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 A four-footed animal. Four-footed animal, which are horses, <clears throat> Mr. B. Yes, Miss Ash, number one, for this uh, <laughs> reasonable stipend that you receive, do you provide somebody with horses? No. Nope. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Uh, can you yourself be seen on the back of a horse at any time, no. Miss Ash? Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. But, Miss Ash, you have some personal contact uh, with live horses, I gather. They're not... They're alive when you have something to do with them. Yeah, we would agree the horses are alive in their relationship to Miss Ash. <laughs> and, and beyond that, we're not willing to, you know, to reveal anything at the moment. Do you appear in a corral with these horses? No. That makes it four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, how could you do anything but benefit a live horse? You <coughs> don't brand a horse. Well, do you do anything physical to the horse? No. No. Five down and five to go, Mr. Bean. Remember, the whole old term of reference is do horses have anything to do with the service? And we've agreed that there are in the general mix horses. Beyond that, we have uh, volunteered nothing. Mr. B. She doesn't write letters I to them, I know. <laughs> Miss Ash, uh, uh, do you do this regularly in connection with horses? Yes. Do you do this for the same people over and over again? No. They never come back again? Yes. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I was going to ask Miss Ash to give you a qualified yes. Now, we'd agree that it's really possible that the same people might come and get whatever degree of benefit is uh, uh, to be attributed to the kind of service being delivered at the time it's being delivered, etc. and so forth. <laughs> Miss Ash, the, I'm correct in assuming that the horse remains alive throughout whatever it is that you're doing, right? Well, I hope so, yes. Uh, does the horse work and uh, do manual labor or <laughs> whatever you would call it? Uh, well, I would with say this. that we would have to agree if I could have a small p conference here because I don't want to be in conflict with Miss Ash, who really knows a lot more about this than I do. Considering the verbs that you have used and wanting to be uh, extremely fair, uh, we will agree that uh, as the question was posed, uh, we would do a disservice if we were to give you an answer in the negative. Therefore, we'll give you one in the affirmative. You have enormous class, Mr. Daly. Uh, I don't remember what verbs I used what there. Verbs did you use? Oh, I wouldn't remember. I mean, that. Uh, <laughs> what if they did manual labor? You yes. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, Miss Ash, the, the horse, is the horse taken by you somewhere? No. That's six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Miss Ash, are you either associated with a racetrack or, I'm going to have two questions here, or is the horse attached to something like a carriage? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, uh, I'll, take, I'll take the last one. Is the horse attached to a carriage? Thank no. you. Seven oh! Down. <laughs> three, seven down and three to go, Mr. Sir. She well, with a like slight a assistance, Marlene, you then have something to do with horse racing. Yeah. Uh, do you have anything to do with the wagering that goes on? No. Eight down and two to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you work indoors? No, I don't. Nine down and one to go, Mr. Bean. Do you directly benefit the, the observers who sit and watch the race being performed? We would, I think, have to agree that the yes. service that is supplied here would be considered of benefit by anyone who was an habitué at, uh, at racetracks. Yes, it is certainly uh, <laughs> yeah, some benefit to be... To, yeah, you can have 30 seconds for a cut. She, the self -programs or the she could even handicap, or yeah. she could be an usher. 
It's got a chuckle, so it's more than likely hot dogs or something. Uh, do you sell something to eat? No. no, that's ten dollars and no more to go, and this is good fun because actually Miss Ash blows the bugle, calls the calls, and calls the colors. <laughs> she also uh, plays the cornet in the Arizona State University band, and this uh, is why I. Is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is why I made the point. This is done weekends, and when she's on holiday. Uh, the season runs from November through April. Yes. And when she's on vacation, she has it four days a week, which is the number of days in the We the should have gotten it, John. It was so easy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, a, it was a tough one, but I, I, I think you did get tangled with the horses there. But yes. a lot of people have been tangled with horses to their sorrow for a <laughs> great many, many centuries. And thanks very much. Nice to have had the panel, panel puzzled, man. <laughs> Thing I think Bennett will agree with. Actually, Miss Ash is at the uh, the uh, Arizona Downs. They call it the Paradise Racetrack. Now, with such a lovely bugle blower, so it should be. <laughs> and now let's see what we can do with our second challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Malcolm Baya. Right, sir? Where are you from, sir? Quag, Long Island. Quag, Long Island. Mm -hmm. Nice to have you with us, Mr. Byer. May I present the panel? You do. You'd now join me yes, here, sir. and um, we'll tell the audience in the theater and the audience at home exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel, we can tell you that um, Mr. Byer is self-employed, deals in a product, and we'll begin everything with uh, Arlene Francis. Mr. Byer, is your product one that some of us on the panel might use? Not sure. Yes. Uh, can women use it as well as men? Yes. Uh, is it uh, uh, something that would make us happy if we used it? Yes. I hope uh, so. Is it uh, something other than edible, your product? No. One I down and nine to go, Mr. Too. Sir. I'm doing fine tonight. Mr. Boyer, have you got anything to do with any kind of liquid fare? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, is this uh, edible, something you would eat at meals? Yes. One meal more than another? Mm. Yes. We would say uh, basically yes. It would be generally accepted that it would be eaten at one wheel more than another, but this does not rule out the possibility that it could not be eaten oh, at another. Oh, I know. People are peculiar. Uh, <laughs> lunch and dinner more than breakfast? I would think more than, yes, wouldn't you? On a more than basis. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, is it an accessory rather than a ma main course? Yes. Uh, is it a condiment? No. That's three down and seven to go, Mr. B. Uh, Mr. Byer, do you uh, participate in the tending of something natural? I, beg I don't you. quite get your question, sir. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> Do you raise anything to maturity or partial maturity? I have, but nothing to do with this product. <laughs> <laughs> That's four down and six to go, Arlene. You say that it is not a main course. That was correct, yes. was it not? And it yes, is not a condiment. Could I buy it in a store? Yes. A grocery store? Mm, yes. Uh, is it, uh, something that has ever been alive? No. That makes it five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. See, when you think of the famous people that live in Quag in the summer, like, uh, John O'Hara and Just Charlie, Charles, uh, Charles Adam, <laughs> uh, Mr. Byer, uh, I'm dazzled by the fact that you come from Quag. Uh, is, is, is your product, uh, sweet? 
That is a tough one. That's a tough question. I don't, I'm not sure we could answer it with accuracy. Technically... The word is used, but I would say it is not. Yeah. Well... Can I would I say this, Betty. We can't give you a certain answer. Right. I would Let's think technically we, we might lose it one way or another. So you withdraw the question and we'll be much happier than you are. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Byer, is it a dairy product? No. Thank you very much, Bennett. That got me off the hook. Yeah. Six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, is it a luxury product? Yes. Uh, is it associated with fish? Yes. Is it caviar? Yes. yes. <laughs> Now, what, what is this What's wrong with the caviar type? But what does he have to do with the product? You've identified the product. Um, well, he must import caviar. Import <laughs> caviar. Right. Very good. And, uh, now, it's my pleasure to introduce Brigadier General Malcolm Byer. How do you do? Of the United States Marine Corps. Retired. Retired. <laughs> and Iron Gate Products, Inc., which will have oh, a familiar yes. note to you. He's associated with 21. Great Western yeah, 21 here in New York. Yeah. And uh, this is the man who gets, I was at 20 tons last year? 22. 22 mm -hmm. tons of caviar he, he brought into the United States. Buyer, a general buyer, just to shock the television audience, what is the current price of a pound of good caviar? Uh, $45 for the... I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am too, really. $45? Yes, $45 a yes, pound. But a pound of caviar serves a lot of people. it's worth it. Yeah. Thank you. That's really, yeah, and 22, 22 tons is a lot of pounds. And, uh, it mounts up. It mounts up. And thank you very much, thank General. Thank you, sir. Nice to have had you with us. Would you give my opinion to the Jackson of the Memorial Foundation? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment. Now the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger. The panel, as you know, is always blindfolded. Are the blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? <laughs> All right. Panel, as you know, in the case of the mystery guest, one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. And we'll begin with uh, Orson Bean. Yes, uh, mystery guest, are you uh, connected with show business? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Miss Francis. Are you primarily known for your work in motion pictures? Yeah. Mr. Sir. Have you got a picture currently being shown in the Broadway sector or about to open there? About to next week, yeah. Oh, too much information, yeah, Mr. Gallon. <laughs> Are you a blonde? Mm hmm, yeah. <laughs> oh, Mr. Bean? Uh, will your picture be a comedy? I hope not. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Would you be considered a young leading woman? I think so, yeah. Mr. A young Swedish leading woman. Uh, Mr. Sir, Mr. Sir, are you a, are you a star who was born in America? Yeah, yeah. Miss Kilgallen. Uh, I pass. Hmm. Mr. Bean. Are you a sex symbol? <laughs> Thank you for asking. I hope so. <laughs> I'd like to know who you have in mind, dear. Uh -huh. <laughs> Are you... Let me see now. Do you live in New York? Is that your headquarters? Yeah, yeah. Mr. Sir. Uh, may I assume that you're not Jane Mansfield? <laughs> you may assume that, yeah. <laughs> Miss Kilgallen? Are you Lee Remick? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the rain must fall is going to open on Wednesday. I on mean, Wednesday, yes. On, on Wednesday on Broadway. And I knew that was going to give too much information to you all. But uh, 
Anyway, we gave him a little bit of trouble. What's the name of the picture? It's called Baby the Rain Must Fall. Baby the Rain Must Fall. Where is it opening? On uh, Wednesday at Low State. It was the traveling lady at one time, mm -hmm. about 10 years ago oh, on Broadway. Yeah. Yes. From the play. That's right. Yeah. Beautiful story. Miss well, Remick and I did one of the two pictures I've ever been in together, however briefly. Yes. And I'd always wanted to go on location, you know, to the south of France. <laughs> I was finally sent on location to Ishpeming, Michigan. Ishpeming, <laughs> <laughs> the one I, I must say, San Francisco should be a great place to make Oh, it's picture. marvelous, I'll yes. never forget that. It's there, and it's, yeah. it's a marvelous place. Every time we see them, we identify all of the places. Yes. Really. Thanks very much, Ben. Thank nice you. to nice have you with us. You. <laughs> You've done well and give you a congratulations, panel. We'll have another contestant after this word. And now a final challenge you. Will you enter and sign in, please? John M. Bean. Is that right, John? <laughs> All right. Mr. Bean, would you tell us where you're from? Uh, West Reading, Connecticut. West Reading, in Connecticut. Yes, May I uh, present the panel? Will uh, you sir. join me over here? We'll let the audience at home and the audience in the theater know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right. Panel, we can tell you that Mr. Bean is self-employed, deals in a service, the time is short, and we'll begin with Dorothy Kilgallen. Could I use your service, Mr. Bean? Yes. Uh, would I be better off or happier because of it? If you were to look for it, yes. Uh, do you work indoors? Yes. Do you ever go to people's homes? Occasionally. Uh, do you work with your hands? Yes. Uh, do you fix anything? In a way. In a manner of speaking, I would say here that we're answering <coughs> questions, Dorothy, because the questioning is broad. Go to the homes occasionally. This isn't properly the reference factor that should uh, be there. Fix things people, with your hands in a way. You know. Usually people go to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And as a result, something is done. Yes. Is that correct? I don't wish to be too broad, but I can't think of anything else. No, I just didn't want to mislead you, that's all. Okay. Thank you, John. Um, do you wear anything but an ordinary business suit in your work? Sometimes. Sometimes. Is it uh, something of a coverall? Could be, yes. Would I know what it meant if I saw it? No. No. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean, do you manufacture something? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Women come to you for your service, Mr. Yes. Bean? That's nice. <laughs> uh, however, you do not uh, touch the person that comes to you. That isn't no. what you touch, no. no. Do you do something to something they bring to you? Yes. Uh, is what they bring to you alive? Yes. Is it an animal of some sort? Yes. Uh, are you uh, a trainer or doctor of animals? Yes. Are no. you a doctor of animals? No. no. Oh, my God. Three times a night. Well, Arlene feeds me these things. You're a trainer of, do of animals. Yes. What animals? Are, are they dogs? Yes. yes. Very good. <laughs> That's great. Actually, Mr. Bean is the director of a school for dogs. It's called a canine college. He trains dogs for obedience, you know, for store protection, for all that sort of thing. He has, a, has his, his college, canine college, in West Reading. And I thought we'd hang them right over the railing. We didn't do it, but we had a lot of fun, and fun. thanks very much for being with Thank us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Mr. Bean, to tell the truth, it has been a delight to have you with us. Hope it's we see you fun. back here again. And good night, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Good night, John. Good night, Orson. Lovely to see you. Good night. Good night, my dear. Good night, my dear. And good night, Martin. Be good. Have a good time in Houston. Yeah, it's just Thursday, one day. Mm. Good night, John. Nice to see you again. Just Thursday, one day. As if Houston could take more of Bennett than one day. And thank you all for being with us on What's My Life.
Man is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Pop. This is Johnny Olson reminding you, if you'd like to attend one of our broadcasts, write to What's My Line, CBS Tickets, 485 Madison Avenue, New York, New York, 10022.